Hey guys, so today I am starting the Milford Trek. Just started the Milford track. It's a beautifully sunny day. And it's only about an hour and a half to the first hut, the Clinton hut. So I got to my first hut, Clinton Hut. It actually has a lot more facilities than I thought it would. It has uh, bunk beds, but then it also has kitchen facilities with running water, uh, gas cookers that I guess run all through the summer, and um, even like toilets and sinks with running water. So that's really awesome. So the first day was really easy. It wasn't uphill until like the last 50 feet. We took a cruise through Lake Tianu to get here. It was really, really windy up top, but it was absolutely beautiful. Overall, I'd say day one was pretty successful. P.S. Everything here is like ridiculously bright and ridiculously green. It's like someone just turned up the saturation dial in this place. It doesn't look real. It's ridiculous. I can't even capture it. It's amazing. I'm super tired because I got like no sleep last night packing for this thing, so... I'm gonna get some really good sleep tonight. I hear that sometimes you can hear kiwi birds screeching at night, so I'm looking forward to that, but otherwise I'll see you guys tomorrow. an awesome spot for lunch. It's called Hidden Lake. I don't even think it's marked in the guidebook and it was perfect for lunch and it just turned out to stop raining while I was eating and continued as soon as I left, so that was cool. Man, that water looks so inviting, but it's so cold. As my ranger said, straight from the glacier. A late start again. We had a talk from the ranger and she taught us a little bit about the Kia birds that are in the area. There are uh, a whole bunch of alpine parrots 
in the forest here and they're one of the smartest birds in the world and I guess they have the intelligence of like a four-year-old child and so they like to mess with people and they like to play tricks and games and so we had to hang our boots up on like little hooks and hang up absolutely anything that was gonna go outside because I guess they like to like take out the soles and like mess with the shoelaces and like throw your boots into trees and stuff um, I haven't been able to see one yet, but I did hear them throughout the night. So I just thought that was kind of funny. She had all kinds of stories of the trouble that the Kia birds have gotten into. And uh, she also told us that apparently, I don't want to jinx it again, but apparently we have no rain forecasted for today, which she said we've had an unusually rainy month, like really unusual. And this is the second day that this has happened all season. And it's happening on the day when we, our group, is going to be going over the McKinnon Pass, which is the most important part and the prettiest view. So, fingers crossed we'll actually get a view because it's often covered by clouds so you can't see anything. So. McKinnon Pass right behind me as you can see beautiful views on both sides beautiful views on the way up I've never hiked with a big backpack before but those switchbacks and that uphill climbing is a lot harder when your legs are sore from two days of walking already and you've got a big pack so just something to note I'm beginning the descent down the mountain to the final hut dumpling hut down at the very bottom of this valley So I got to the public shelter and the cabin for the guided guests. From here you can do an hour and a half kind of side trip to Sutherland Falls. So I am going to do that even though I'm so tired. I've heard it's wonderful and it's super hot outside. I had to shed like all of my layers and it's supposed to have a nice spray. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean look at these fairy tale freaking stairs. It's not fair New Zealand. Share some magic with the rest of us. So this whole walk to the Sutherland Falls is basically just like stairs and really steep hills and I've concluded two things from this Milford track. One, I'm gonna be really fit <laughs> being in New Zealand. And two, I could not be in the Fellowship of the Ring because I couldn't keep up. Absolutely spectacular view. 100% would recommend making that extra hour and a half side trip. It's definitely worth it. <laughs>
Oh my god, you guys, this last hour is brutal. You get back from the side trip, Sutherland Falls, and you kind of wish that you were a guided guest because their hut is right there. Independent walkers have to walk another hour to our hut. My feet are killing me. I'm not even looking at anything anymore. I'm just walking like one foot in front of the other. I still got probably another 20 minutes. It's rough. You guys, by some miracle, I got here last and somehow got a bottom bunk <laughs> for my last night here. Good morning, guys. It's the last day on the Milford Trek. It is about 6.30 a.m. I'm pretty sure I was actually the first person awake today at like 5 because I know how slow I've been walking and I have a boat through Milford Sound um, back to land at the end of the trail at 3 o'clock and I want to make sure I get to that. So yeah, I'm going to be one of the first people to head out of here. One quick thing I kind of wanted to talk about too was uh, food for the track. So a lot of people brought like bags of rice and eggs and like tons and tons of stuff like a lot of people had to clear out their backpacks on the second or third day if you're new to this and you don't know how to pack lightly with actual food uh do what i did and just get a whole bunch of snacks together for lunches and then backcountry cuisines from new zealand camping stores for your dinners and breakfasts and they're freeze-dried so they're really light I'll kind of show you how you do it. I'll, literally all you have to bring is just one pan to boil water and a spoon and, and fork. I brought a spork. You just boil water, pour it in there, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then it's ready to go. It's like a full meal, hot meal. It's great. It is a little bit more on the expensive side to do it that way, but it's totally worth it for your back. was kind of interesting. I was talking to this girl in my dorm from France. I was telling her about how I hadn't seen any kia yet, those alpine birds, and she told me that they've been everywhere. Like there were some playing on the hut yesterday. She's seen like dozens of them. And I guess I just haven't been looking up at the trees or something because I haven't seen any, but I've been hearing them. So I'm spending today looking up adamantly because I want to see one before I get off this track. But one thing I have seen a ton of has been um, wicca, which are these little awkward looking turkey looking things. And they're like squirrels here. They're everywhere and they come right up to you and they come and they steal your stuff. So you have to watch your stuff when you're eating. It was really funny when we first saw the first couple of them, everybody was all like coming up and taking pictures. And by the end, everybody's just like, shoo. Like they're just, there's so many of them. You, you see one like every two seconds. It's ridiculous. There's two little baby wicca. rude so I'm sitting here trying to just simply eat lunch rest for longer than maybe 10 minutes it's kind of hard to do that here because one thing to note about the Milford track and just New Zealand in general is that there are horrendous amounts of sand flies which are like mosquitoes they bite at you they're particularly bad on this part of the track they weren't as bad yesterday because we were up so high but whenever you're by like rivers and lakes and stuff it's bad. It's so bad that the final checkpoint of the track where they pick you up by boat, it's called Sandfly Point. Even I brought like some sandfly spray with me, which is essential. But even then, it's like it only works for like five minutes at a time, it seems, and then they're back at you. Every time I like wipe my face, like a sandfly comes off of it. It's, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> 
You guys, I just feel like so content with life right now. <laughs> so I'm eating at that like sand fly infested shelter and everybody's going on about walk two minutes up the trail and there's a beautiful waterfall and I don't think the sand flies like the spray. So you can go sit up on the beach by the waterfall. So I go over there and it's freaking beautiful. I just sat there and hung out by the lake for like half an hour, listening to some Dave Matthews. People were like swimming in the water. It was freezing, but it's so nice today that it felt kind of nice. Oh my gosh, it was just a picture perfect moment. It was wonderful. I didn't want to leave. If I didn't have a boat to catch, I would have stayed there for a couple of hours. It was amazing. And this whole thing has just been like magical. I mean, we got the postcard Milford soundtrack. It could not have gone any better. This place rains 300 days out of the year. Just a couple of days ago, they had to wade through flooding on the trail above their knees. And they often have to have people stay at their huts for days longer than expected just because of how much it rains here and how much it floods. It was raining like so crazy and all of the days leading up to our track that everything is just green and perfect and beautiful. And for us, we got three sunny days out of those 65 non-rainy days, we got three of them. It's unbelievable, the luck. This is just such a once in a lifetime moment.